Hi, everyone out there. Welcome to Love at First Laugh, the green room edition. And today I have an amazing guest. It's hilarious. Oh my God, I watched his comedy special last night. I was just laughing so hard. Uh, you've seen him on Comics Unleashed, Politically Incorrect with Bill Mayer and Amazon Prime. He has a, his own comedy special on Amazon Prime called Shang is Shangri. <laughs> Please welcome the awesome and hilarious Shang. Hey, Hi. hey, how are you? Can you hear me good now? Yes, I can. I know we were like having so much stress. Like, oh my God, yeah, we can't yeah, hear each other. My, my headphones uh, took a dump on me. So uh, well, that happens. How it are happens. you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So good that you were here. Thank you for saying yes to my little podcast. I'm oh, very nice to you. That was nice of you. I, I, I like the vibe. So, oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. My God, I watched your comedy special last night. I was, it's so funny. I have a lot of questions. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh oh, all right. Now, let me turn off the phone. Here we go. It starts now, people. It starts now. Good. The phone is off. We're all set. We can hear each other. I know. I know. I know. Okay, cool. Okay, awesome. So, you know, I always ask my guests, like, what was their start? Like, the beginnings of Shang. How was that? How did you start the comedy? Why did you start it? What propelled you to do it? Uh... I, I'm, I'm a goofball, and a lot of people were saying, you're really goofy. You're really, really goofy. You should get paid for it. Somebody was joking about it. And I went down to the comedy uh, club, it's called Who's On First, with Peter Spellos in New York City. And I, um, I, I went down and did the open mic because a guy bet me 50 bucks I wouldn't do it. And I was like, 50 bucks? Yeah, I'll do it. And I needed that 50 bucks that day. <laughs> I needed it. Yeah. So... Um, I, I did it and I did okay for my first time. And the club owner's like, man, you need to come back and do this again. And that's how he talked. I don't know why he talked that way. Come on, bro. You need to be back here. I'm like, what are you, what are you, uh, Dukes of Hazard voice? What is that? Well, I'll tell you right now, you're funny and you need to come back. So I, I came down again and again and again. And then I think the seventh time I bombed. And uh -oh. the first part of the joke worked. And then I did a weird joke about albinos. Uh, you know, I this is a, my one of my first jokes was when Obama died, they cremate them and make member bottles of white out. That's what I thought they made bottles of white out of. That's so funny. Uh, and uh, some people got offended, and then I was like, then I went, I'm gonna do this for real now. I'm not quitting. And I never, <laughs> that's the only that's yeah. But that's you know crazy. what? Everybody in the feed. Hello, everybody. I wanted to do the show. It's Love at First Sight, which laugh, which is not a sight, but it's laugh. And that's a great name. I, I told my friend that and he said, that's an awesome, awesome name. So oh, well, thank uh, you. Uh, uh, awesome. no, no. Back to what you were saying. That's why I started comedy and I haven't stopped and it, since. And I've luckily it's been 20, 25 years and I haven't had a day job in 22. Nice. So I've made a living off of just being a jokester. And That's amazing. What did you do before you did full time comedy full time? Um, well, I was an illustrator. I worked for uh, Leon Ludovici Studios, and I um, did stuff for uh, technical drawings for Three Mile Island. Nice. Sounds really weird that I would do stuff like that, uh, but I did. No, that. no, I can I can see the nerd in you. Why? Thank you. You're so welcome. No, uh, it takes no, one I, to know one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I did that. And then yeah. when I started comedy, I did security because I could do security and still do my sets. I could still go do shows. And then I, from 12 midnight, I did that to like two. And then I also, because I wanted to work on the doc, which didn't make my pops happy that I got a degree and I'm out there working on the docs. But the docs gave me so much flexibility that they were like, just get done whatever you get done. Mm -hmm. So even if I was supposed to work from 12 midnight to six, if I got it done at two in the morning, long as it was done, you could leave and you would still get paid like you work from 12 to six. So I would go to do comedy from seven till around 10, then change, go down, work the docks. Mm -hmm. And then I got done with working the docks, security, did security. And after I did security, I got enough money where I didn't have to do anything but comedy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. That's great. When did you start touring like as a headliner? How many years uh, did it take you to do that? Uh, it was 
nine years. It was nine years, nice. before, nine years before I started. I was I didn't want a headline. I like featuring. I really? Like, Why so? Because you're right in the middle. You don't have to do as much time. It's not on <laughs> you to pack the house. It, the feature, like nobody cares about the feature. And but I still <laughs> made enough money to maintain. And then um, a club, Caroline's headlined me. Uh, Caroline from Caroline's on Broadway, 50th and Broadway headlined me. And because uh, some of the comics I was going up before I was so aggressive and uh, with my act, they felt like, well, we can't put him up in the middle anymore. We got to put him at the end. So, oh, I, so I got pushed in the headliner, but I didn't want to at first. And then I did it and went, oh, okay, this is not that bad. And the money is way more. Way well, more. Yeah, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. yeah. A hundred percent. Um, how do you prepare for a show? Do you have like any rituals or anything that you do before you go up on the stage? A sacrifice a goat. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that. I said you played three. But oh, okay. So, yeah. so you're up to three. So <laughs> get there, yeah. It depends. You got you start off slow. Um, but I no, I um I now I could just literally be in the middle of a conversation and go, Oh, you're next, and I'll go up. But when I first started, I just would go out. And I, I know this sounds weird. I literally would count. I'd pace like five times, run the set five, like five times in my pacing. Then I was good. Like I never after that. And then now I don't even need to do anything. I was just like, okay, you're next. Boom. Ready yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah. You're ready. It yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Put a little bit of cocoa butter on my buttocks. It makes me feel sexy, but nobody knows I have it on, but I know I have it on. So when I come on stage, I feel, I feel a little sexy. <laughs> and so when you feel sexy, sometimes you do better. You have a better show. That's a little uh, note for the people in the feed in case you want to know how that makes uh, a lot of the headliners I know. Boom. Cocoa butter on their buttocks. I, I'm i going to try it. Getting yeah, my cocoa shot. butter on Amazon right now after the there show. There you go. There yeah. You go. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's a great secret. Thank you for sharing that. There you go. And it has to be on the butt. It can't be anywhere yeah. else. Can't be anywhere else. Anywhere that, else. Yes. It got, and it has to be smooth. And and silky, yes, very important. Nice. Nothing yeah. like a smooth, silky butt. Nothing. Nothing. There, that makes you feel better. So absolutely. Yeah. So um. Uh. But no, like I don't. Pre I don't prep. I can. I can go up on any stage. I don't get. Um. I don't get apprehensive anymore. I don't. Yeah. I don't think I ever got apprehensive. I just thought, well, if this don't work out, I'll go back to doing graphics and. Prom. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just thought. I knew how to do it. I still know how to do graphics and promos and stuff. So, I, you know, and then, but it, I never, it never happened. I was like, the times where I thought, oh man, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Something would happen. But, yeah. um, you know, the ups and downs of it, the money, the pandemic obviously slowed me down um, substantially, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay now. That's amazing. That's great. You're, you're awesome. So <laughs> thank you. That's nice of you. And thank you for watching the special. Uh, Oh my God. No, of course. It was hilarious. It's like, I, I, it was easy to watch and I laughed my ass off. Oh, with good. The cocoa butter. I can't imagine with yeah. cocoa butter, how much the laughter would be more enjoyable. Right. If I wouldn't have used cocoa butter, cause I used a lot for that show. Cause we had two, we had to do two shows. We did two shows. It was 2,500 people per show. And, um, well, you saw it was a, it was a pretty sizable venue. So yeah. I, I, I wanted to make sure that each joke was back to back. I didn't want to mm -hmm. leave a lot of uh, space between jokes. So that's why I made sure I was, even when I wasn't doing a joke, I wanted to be saying something constantly, constantly, constantly. constantly yes, that's, yes. That's great. And you, you did it. And it was yes. awesome. Uh, so, here's Joe, he's saying my apologies for repeating this. Cause he always says this, I know, but comics get the biggest balls, got the biggest balls in the world for getting up on stage and owning the house. I could never do that. Um, it's, no, coming up with new material is, is it, that's that's the hard part. Not going up on part. stage, yeah. Uh, the on stage, but you got to make sure. And also, if you have to follow a monster, if you have to okay. follow somebody that's a like I did the uh, Irvine Improv and a uh, couple heavy heavy hitters with TV shows decided to come do guest sets. You know. Oh, um, oh yeah. But, but yeah, but for me, I just was like, but the comics were like all freaked out, and I was more like, well. Fuck them. I'm going to get up there and do it. And so I now I really am like that. I'll follow Chris Rock. I'll follow I'll follow anybody. I don't you know, my attitude is if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly bear. I'm not a koala bear. I'm trying to be a grizzly bear. So um, I'm trying to smack the laughter out of people's ass. I mean, I really want people to 
have a little bit of snot and a little bit of pee come out. I want not a lot of pee because then that's a messy show, but a little bit of drop when you laugh. And then I've done my job if you peed a little bit. So that's disgusting, but it's true. But it's all, it's yes, that's a sign. Yes. Yeah, that just seals the deal. It yeah. seals the deal that yeah. if somebody comes up and says, you know, I peed a little bit. And then I go, thank you. Yes. I've done my job. You're welcome. And then I, <laughs> you have to say that to them. You can't just, you know, make somebody pee and not tell them you're welcome. That's very important. It's rude. <laughs> yeah. It'd be very rude. This is a weird that we're having. <laughs> this is really free flowing. Like, yeah, yeah, pee on yourself. Thumbs up. Yeah. Listen, I am very accepting and I yes and everything. Yes. Well, and this sounds like a hit on, but you have an incredible smile. Well, thank you. Yeah, you really do. I and mean, like it, that. If, now, if I had a van and candy, then it would be creepy. <laughs> like if I would pull it up to you, go, you got a really nice smile. And then I was listening to R. Kelly or something or <laughs> some weird music in the background. You'd be like, ah, you, yeah. Like, yeah, thank you. And you're like, you sure you don't need a lift? You sure? Because, uh, Going right down to the, uh, you know, <laughs> and then they, you don't do that. Never get in a car with a guy. But um, oh, no, oh. never. And I've been offered. <laughs> and you've been offered. I know. I can. Yeah, tell. yeah. I like uh, no things. No, but comedy wise, I think for me, um, now it's it's changed. So since I started, you have to. Uh, social media is so important. Yes. And, and right now, um, I'm building my social media because uh, it took me a minute to. You know, for some reason, I, people, I've had stuff go viral, but not on my own platform. Like the Laugh Factory oh. Instagram, I had one of my clips get like three million views. I've nice. never got that many on my own, like on YouTube. I've gotten a lot, like 200,000, 300,000. And that's still astounding to me. Yeah. But now, but they, but they, then I don't get followers. It's just weird. Like you give me the little thumbs up on the YouTube, but you won't follow me. What does that mean, you creeps? Let me tell you people something. If you don't start doing that, you know, my Instagram is at Comedian Shang. Why did my voice change? At Comedian Shang, and I swear to God, I swear to God, if you don't do that, I swear to God, I'm going to smack you so goddamn hard. Your eyeball's going to fall through your balls. I'm not fucking around. That's how it's done, Shang. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of good fellas. I need to stop. I can tell, but yeah. that's okay. That was a really good imitation. I thank you. I think that sometimes I put it out there and then it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Hey, hey, don't get out of line. Don't get it. <laughs> none, none of you people in the feet. Hey, <laughs> now, why do we, why do they always do that? Huh? 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 I don't know. Listen, I'm three quarters Italian. and I have no idea why they do that. They do. I, I, yeah. I mean, yeah, I they, it's, they, like, it's like putting a period in a sentence. Like, eh, you know, eh. yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I do. I'm like, what? Right? Are you finished? Are, you're not finished. Oh, you're not finished. Okay, got it. But yeah. no, I used to do a club called Pips in Brooklyn. And when I say they were like, hey, I swear to God, <laughs> you better be fucking funny tonight. I'm not, you know what? If you're not, boom, gonna rip your arm off and beat you with it. I swear. No, so, no. And, so you had to be funny. So um yeah, yeah they booked me. They booked me again because mm -hmm. one of the one of the comics got heckled. And he just got off stage. He said, okay, thank you, good night. And I went up and the guy said something to me. And then I threatened, to, I think I think threatened to rape his ear or something. Oh, shit. And something about ear rape. I said ear rape. And then the guy was like, I can respect that. And then he didn't stop heckling with me. Yeah. So yeah. We, we can take like hardcore shit. Like I can take hardcore insults and hardcore, yeah. like you stop me. In a funny way, I'll be like, yeah, you, you, I like this guy. Yeah. And then yeah. after that, the owner was like, hey, what are you doing uh, next week? Yeah, maybe we could book you on the uh, late show. <laughs> and so I made, I remember I made, it was crazy. I made $45 and I made, and you got a meal and a drink. And nice. I don't drink, so it was like ginger ale. And every time I would say ginger ale, cranberry juice, I'd go, what are you on your period? What are you? <laughs> what, are you what are you, a girl? Uh, and because I was the only comic that wasn't taking advantage of all the drinks because all I drank was ginger ale. And because because I see comics that drink before their set, you you can't. You yeah, can't, can't function. You can't focus on your set. Yeah. You can't um, like if you have a 45 minute set, you're not sharp you're drinking it. Might, you're not as sharp. So and yeah. I seen some comics really blow it that way. And I was like mm -hmm. when I was a young comic, I said, I'm never doing that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for you. No, that's great. Do you drink yeah. after, though? No, 
I yeah. drank once. That's why I have that kid that you saw walk in. I'm just <laughs> serious. A bunch of comics were like giving me shit going, oh, so you don't drink? You got to try it once. I went, and I was like, well, I'm a man. Okay. <laughs> and then boom, Cameron. Uh, no, are you serious? No. Dead serious. It's not, not a joke? Not a joke at all. Stop it. No, it's, yeah, it's real. But wow. then, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, I get. No, I can't. You want another kid? All you have to do is drink. That's it. If I want another one, I'm gonna bow. Give me some. Yeah. They gave me um a thing called a brain hemorrhage. That was the name of the drink. And I tried um, to. That I, took, good. I know. I I I just I was that that masculine. You know, where men are trying to be too manly. Yeah. Like, give me the hardest drink you could drink. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I'm a big man. Let's go. And then after that, uh, I wake up, you know, going, who is this chick? And uh, yeah, so. Oh, my God. How old is your kid? Uh, I have two. I have a 12 year old who's with his mom now, which makes me very sad. Um, not in like a bad way. It's just that she went on vacation. She's in Florida. He's with her. And then and was and it was her turn. And uh, and then I have the one uh, Cameron, who's 23. OK. And he moved out and then the pandemic hit and he moved back in. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So happy Father's Day, people. That's right. Mm -hmm. no, but no, I, I love them both. I just talked to my youngest and it made me feel good. He said, happy Father's Day. And it was really nice. He said, I'm down in Florida. And I, I just hope that he's doing well. Um, I miss him. And yeah, of course. And then my oldest, uh, I don't miss him because he's right there. <laughs> so but uh uh i mean and and it's funny because i remember one time my youngest said uh because he watched a clip of me not my clean set because i have a clean set oh you and, do oh you have a clean set and i have a, I, have a, I have two different sets yeah so he's seen my clean set and then he saw my blue set on a clip of youtube somebody put up and i didn't even put it up and he says wait a minute you tell me not to cuss but you cuss and i go yeah but they're paying me to cuss you know, that's bullshit. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's that's it's weird that it, I had to say, yeah, they kind of do pay me to say yeah. inappropriate shit. Yeah. So I, I, you know, and when I started making decent money, it was about 18 years in where I was like, oh, shit, I'm making, you know, doctor money. Yeah, but it, it, but it was funny. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I um. There were so many of these where uh, down, you know, right? I got signed to a deal. Oh, we're going to do a TV show and then do a pilot and it didn't get picked up. I've done seven pilots, wow. not my own pilots, where it was uh, ensembles. Like I've ensembles, my own. But not your own. Have you ever had anybody pick up your, um, have you asked for a show, like the start of the show of a sitcom or? No, it's always been ensemble. I've it's always, always been for, started. okay. Okay, have you ever done. like written your? Yeah, I written. I, yeah, I, I wrote one. I pitched it. Um, they signed me to a deal. I end up writing for somebody else okay. for a year. I, I end up doing punch up for other people's shows and pilots, Excellent. and then they never, and then they never made it. But they gave me the money. So yeah, but it got you to other gigs. So right, it got me got me writing way. gigs. I was yeah. I was writing for different shows and still doing stand up. And the reason I started writing for shows is once I knew I was going to have a kid, I was like I can't tour with a kid because it was just me and him uh you know because his mom was like uh here and, and so yeah. i was like cool but i knew i couldn't tour so i started writing and i was writing for different tv shows because that way i knew i'd be done at three pick him up by 3 30 mm -hmm. i could still be because i worked at gower studios and his school was the little red schoolhouse which is literally right around the corner perfect so, so i could be on highland so i would pick him up Mm -hmm. And we would do whatever we need to do. So, uh, and then, um, you know, with my youngest, his school was literally down the street too. So it, it, yeah, everything yeah. was right where I needed it. Um, but no, I, and, but I, you know, you do get that itch to just get back on stage. And when I got back on stage, I was weird. I didn't do stand up for like a year and change. And I got back. Oh, up, wow. Didn't miss a beat. You, you just like went on and it was yep. like, you never left. No. Yeah, yeah, and it was weird. I, I, um, I forgot some of my old material because I was thinking about new jokes, and I wrote the new stuff and did it. And then when I was working on a special, by the way, if anybody in this feed don't watch this special, I swear, when I see you, <laughs> when I see you in the streets, guess what's going to happen? We're going to mm -hmm. have a dance off. 
We're going to have a dance off. OK, we're going to both put on something, some nice pants, <laughs> nice slacks, dance off. Everybody out there, you're looking, look at me looking at you. All you people in the feed, if you don't get if your dance is not up to par. You're in trouble when you see me. And you so. got to watch it, guys, because it's hilarious. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, Amazon Prime was uh, I wanted Netflix, but ah, that didn't work out. But um, yeah. Amazon's been pretty cool. And Amazon is, uh, uh, you know, a platform where people can get to look at it. And uh, it was funny. Some people it was funny. Uh, people were when I told people, no, it's really a special because when you tell you somebody you're executive producing it. Right. They don't look at you as legit. They look at you like. You're yeah. doing it. You're, and then yeah. me and another guy literally edited it in my kitchen. Right. Because I had a big, I have a, had in my kitchen, I have this big giant table and I couldn't fit it on my desk. My desk is small. So mm -hmm. I, so we had the multiple uh, computers on there and we edited it in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, so when you tell people, like, what are you doing? I'm working. Where are you working at? Did you get a studio? And nah, I couldn't afford a studio because I dumped all the money into this. So we're doing it in my kitchen, and, but we finished it. We delivered it on time. Nice. And um, Nazi Islam is the guy that worked with me on it. And then we delivered it and everything. And then they were like. Awesome. <laughs> so they, and they, they look amazing. <laughs> it looks so good. Oh, thank you. So yeah, when production you, value is excellent. Yeah. So we we uh, we did that and also wanted to and like if you see the show, people don't realize we did two tapings. The one that we used is the second one. Oh, really? So it's the second one straight through. And the only thing we changed was the intro. We changed the intro. That was it. Because the second show fl flowed better. It was jokes mm -hmm. were, because my act is very one joke. It's like back to back to back, back joke. Yes. It's not a lot of long. Setups long, and shit. Yeah. 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 So we the second one was more boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's like, uh, they, like Dave Goldberg said, the second one was boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so, the rhythm uh, was faster. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we kept that one. That's the one we used. And that was the one that uh, people seem to be responding to. Got a couple good reviews. Got got a couple. Just a few. Yeah, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping more people. But my goal, my goal is. What is your goal? Tell me. My goal is a million views. That's tough to get. Movies get a million views. Do they have a count on Amazon? How many views you get? Uh, you no, they don't. You don't see them, but you don't see them, right? Right. You can you can find out. You can find out. They tell you. So, did Amazon approach you? Did you approach Amazon? How did that work? Did they pay you to to develop it? How no. how did that work? No, we already had finished it. We shopped it. Epics liked it a lot, but okay. said I wasn't known enough. I wasn't big enough name. Um, the guy at Netflix saw the trailer, liked the trailer, but said we're already spent like our budget on comedy. Okay. And I was like, oh, that ain't gonna work. You know, you're gonna do it for free. Right. And then Amazon, because we had a distributor and the Amazon, I was looking at Amazon was releasing Coming to America. And I was like, Coming to America is gonna get a lot of eyeballs to Amazon. If I can get it in the window of time of released around that. So I, I was like, Amazon's the move and then the distributor my comedy store went to them and they they handled it and they put it up they put it up and and we get paid um i have to pay them fat back first but we're at a 99 percent cer rate which is customer engagement ratio and that means we get the highest payout you can possibly get That's so, amazing. so i'll be able to pay the other investors back and then after that and oh plus they're 20 percent you okay. I remember your twenty percent. So I plus that twenty percent, and then then I get paid. So it's more of a big commercial for me. And clubs hopefully will continue to book. I'm pretty booked. So I, I, I and I don't have a. I didn't. I just got an agent. Uh, uh, but I've been booking myself really? the whole time. Been booking myself the whole time, and been lucky that the clubs oh, like okay. me. I'm real low maintenance. I book, I promote the shit out of my mm -hmm. stuff. I post, I do all this stuff. You do. You do yeah. promote a lot on social media. Yeah. And I don't try to fuck. That. I'm one of those guys. I'm not trying to fuck the waitresses. I'm not starting trouble. Right. I show up on time because I, I treat it like a job. I show up on time. I'm in the green room. I'm mm -hmm. not messing around and doing stuff. Um, if they want me to do radio, I don't give a shit. You get, need me to get up at five? Done deal. Because right. there's so many people that don't get the opportunity to you know, I got to go to do shows in Nassau, Bahamas, and Germany, and oh my Paris, God. 
I've been to Paris. I've been to uh, Amsterdam and, you know, doing shows for people who speak Dutch. I learned a little bit of Dutch so I could do my first three jokes and, and, and like, you know, and so I, and then, and then the crowd went, and then I went, nah, I'm messing with you from the year. <laughs> and the went, oh. So, um, but no, I, where else can, you know, I got to do that. And the times when I get down and people try to compare other comics, like, well, Dave Chappelle got this and Dave Chappelle got that. I'm like, one, I'm a friend of his. Secondly, I, when I see other people win, I'm like, good for them. Yeah, of course. And, you know, and if somebody gets a big following, thumbs up to you. Good for you. And my shit is my shit. And my right. path is my path. I don't like it. Yeah. I see, or guys and other comics. In fact, I just did a show. Comics that just do shows or try to get laid. I'm like, work on your act, bitch. I like, I like <laughs> magic comics. It's like, so yeah. you're here just to score women and you're not trying mm -hmm. to make sure your set is strong. And in fact, me and Alonzo Bolton, who was on the show with me, and, yeah. and we were talking about how we're the comics that work on our sh like that like i'm there when i come to do a show i'm there and i think that's why i didn't get laid a lot in life, <laughs> which sucks i want to say that since the pandemic it sucks because i should have had more sex this definitely sucks. and you could as a comic you definitely you're hilarious so you, i'm sure you can have, I should have and i didn't you know what yeah. you know what i would do with my dumb ass after the show i would gather emails I would be outside gathering emails saying, hey, did you enjoy the show? And giving out my postcards, giving my postcards out. Hey, if you get a chance, check out my website. Thank you for coming. And while the other guys are like in the back, just absolutely having an orgy. And I'm, no. I'm in the front, yeah, they're back in the back in the green room, just absolutely smashing chicks. And you know what I'm doing? I'm like, hey, so next time I come to town, maybe you can come check me out. That's the whole time. And then my friend, and my friend put me on a dating app uh, and he was like, because I don't do anything. I just was working. I was right. working. And dad. I was dad and working. And, um, and you know, with Cameron's mom, I was never with her. We, we were never. It was just, you know. Uh, and so I uh, wasn't in a relationship with her, so it was on me. So I was so focused on, like, well, I got to be a dad. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to make sure that I'm strong enough to, you know, rock with these heavy hitter comics. And so I focused on that. And. That's why I didn't get so all you people in the fade. I'm not saying I'm trying to uh, troll for tail. It's just that for some reason, and I don't think I look like a hunchback. My friend said, one of my friends said, Well, you're not the best looking dude. I went, Wow. Oh, no, he was dead serious. Ben, by the way, Ben, you have funny shaped feet anyway. You look like <laughs> a you, Ben. If Ben, if you watch this, I want you to eat a bag of dicks, Ben. Good. So, uh, Good. But no, that was what he said. I was like, "Wow." He said, "Maybe because he says because I get it all the time." Thanks a lot. Oh, really? So, yeah, he's tagging and he's like, "Oh, forget it." No, well, he's, he's not a good he, friend. Is he a really good friend? He's no. a whore. He's, he's a, a whore. whore. He's, oh, he's, he's one of those whore friend. Okay. Yeah, he's a whore friend. He's one of those friends that. Yeah. When are we going out? You know, he's one of those guys. Yeah. So, but I mean. Um, well, you're busy and you focus on what's important to you. So right, yeah, yeah. I think that that was yeah. what a friend of mine told me that's like, how come you like? And now I, since the pandemic, I got to slow down. I was like, yeah, why don't I go out? Why don't I go? <laughs> what are your experiences on the dating apps? I'm curious. I get no play, or <laughs> either I get no play, or women go, "Is this really you?" Oh, one, come on. really? Yeah, or one woman complained to the, what was it, Hinge? and said that oh, no. she was a fan of mine and some guy took his pictures and used them. And I'm like, what? And the one woman I hit up, I swiped and she hit me back and was like, um, she said, yeah, I like real serious guys. I think that, you know, are you a really serious guy? I said, you didn't see my profile? Stupid, but they think because you're a comedian that you're not a serious person or a profound person. Right. Yeah, they think they think if you tell comedy, you're constantly like. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What is that? I, I get the same thing. It's like, oh uh, no, I'm not going to entertain you, idiot. 
Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Why don't you entertain me for a change? Let's see yeah. how funny you are. Oh, I've had that too, where women go, they, they tell me a joke thing. You've heard that. Oh my like, God, I know. They're like, everybody tells me I should do comedy. I'm like, no, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't, <laughs> yeah. So no, I mean, but comedy wise, I feel like, because this is shit I think about. If I pay $25, $30 to see a guy, yeah. if I have a kid, I got to get a babysitter. I got to pay for parking. If you're on a date, you got to pay for your date. As yeah. a man, you're supposed to pay for your date. That's what I way I look at things. Sorry. So no, you pay for your no, date. I apologize for that. Yeah. That's great. No, I'm just saying that you pay for her drinks, you pay for your drinks, you pay for the food. By the end of the night, you're paying $200. So I don't want to see a comic up there fucking off and not doing what he's supposed to do. Come do it. You're supposed to bring it. If you, you know, it, bring it, make sure people leave and just had a great time. I want them to have snot flying out their nose. <laughs> well, not so much now with the pandemic, but not really. Uh, not as much snot <laughs> before. They can pee themselves a couple pee of times. Okay, but I don't want a couple. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I just feel like you can't. You, I mean, people pay their money. Mm -hmm. and I, I, like I go to a concert, I even feel like, like I, I'm writing a whole bunch of new material. I got wrote a bunch of new shit. And I did a set and the lady was like, well, me and my friends came to see you do the joke you did before. I'm like, well, why would you want to see it? Well, I saw it and I wanted her to see it and you didn't do it. I said, it's not karaoke. It's not. <laughs> but you know what? People are like that. I heard Jeff yeah. Fox or the people used to come up to him and say, get her done or uh, what not affects Jeff Fox. What's the guy uh, said? Uh, the cable guy or something? The cable. Yeah. To get her done. Get her done. Or they want, you know, you know, you're a redneck. And he's like, I don't do that anymore. He's like, well, you better, because that's the joke we lack. And if you don't do the joke we lack, <laughs> goddammit. Oh, no, people really do. Um, they want uh, their money back? What yeah. is it? No, I just told her, hey, um, you know, I'll give you free tickets to another show. And she came to the show, and I did the joke she wanted me to do. Oh, my God. Okay. At the Ice House. I remember that that's night. So at the nice. Ice House. That's very nice of you. And she said, and she said uh, thank you. And then I was like, uh, you're welcome. And then I talked to her husband online. I didn't even know it was her husband. I saw the picture of it and went, I sent a thing and it was her husband's profile. I said, thank you for coming to the show. I appreciate you and your friends. I hope you got a good laugh. And he said, hey, what show was it? I said, oh, I'm sorry. And I, your wife came. He said, oh, okay, cool. Well, me and my boys want to check you out. So I, he came with three of his friends. That was nice. so cool. And I was like, yo, man. He said, yeah, my wife said you're funny. So let's see how you do. I said, and then I'll say, well, I don't know why you're doing that. What are you doing that for? <laughs> What is that, bro? Yeah, it's a That's little it. scary. Is yeah. that the universal sign for? I don't know what that is. I, so I have no idea. it's it's a little aggressive. It's a little aggressive, and so, yeah. but then he liked the show. Um, uh, was that the? But that's uh, good. See, yeah. you're really good at dealing with your fans and engaging yeah. them, and you engage. How important do you think that is? Uh, the comics. What's the difference between comics that do that, like you do, and comics that don't do that? Are they still successful, you think? Or Yeah, yeah, because I've seen Chris Rock not talk to anybody. Not talk to any of that? He doesn't give a shit. Um, I, I, I feel like it's how your personality is. If you're an outgoing person, mm -hmm. if you're a nice person, or you're not like an asshole, and you're like, some people are assholes, and some people aren't. And yeah. I feel like, well, if that, I'm not going to act like an asshole. Like, no. you know, like, so if I meet, see people and I go, hey, yeah, I think you're funny, I'm not going to be like, Get out my face. Not right now. No really? photos. Yeah, no why would photos. you do that? Though? No photos. I'm like, are you kidding me? You pay my rent. Are exactly. You? Like I take if remember my ex, my yeah, I'm talking about my ex. We're talking you, about your ex a lot. Yeah. No, no, but that's no, that's no wasn't my no, my no. The <laughs> the camera's mom's not my ex. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh get that straight. Um <laughs> No, my no, that was my ex. I wasn't but the other woman. I was wonder. Um, it was called I got laid for one night and boom, I had a kid. Um, and so uh no. I remember she just hated when we would be out eating and someone would come over, hey, I think you're really funny. And I'm like, and I would only take a second, hey, okay, cool. Let me stop yeah. and just, you know, take a quick picture. Thank you guys. You know, me and my girl are gonna eat right now. No, and you act nice, you act cool, you act chill. Mm -hmm. When I saw I met Tom Hanks. But it was under some weird circumstance, though. We were both at UCLA Medical Center. My niece was at the hospital, very sick. And I think somebody in his family was very sick. And he was sitting by himself. And I was like, oh, you know where you see somebody go, oh, shit, that's Tom Hanks. Yeah. And he he was sitting at the, the, the thing across from me. And he came and sat on the same thing I was sitting. And I was t I t and I turned to him and said, you know, yeah, things, uh, life can hit you. He said, he says, no matter what level you're at. That's right. And I was like, wow. 
And then people walked past, so I was, and he was going, obviously it was a sad time. Something was going on with him. Something was going on with me. And you know what? He took a minute, took pictures with the people, people walked past. And he was uh, weird. I never asked him to take a picture because our conversation started so organically. Yeah. I just felt like that'd be weird. Like, oh dude, and take a picture. And plus he had just taken a bunch of pictures with a bunch of people. And then the nurse called him and he he said, well, we gotta go. Shook my hand and and I was like, look at this guy. Obviously something heavy is going on in his life. And he took time to take pictures with these people to make them happy. I said, that's icy chill. I'm doing that shit. Long as I, I love that. Yeah, Tom Hanks. And he was super nice. He was super cool. And I was like, yo. But it freaked me out a little bit. You know how you see somebody go, is that? Yeah, him? like <laughs> the Tom. Yeah, like what yeah, the hell? It was, it was him. And it was at UCLA Medical Center. And he was super chill. And then I watched how. Uh, I met Dwayne Durock Johnson, how he talked to me because I saw him at, at the airport. Yeah. And, and I was like, I was with another comic and I was like, yo, that's Dwayne. Like, you can't miss him. He's a building. Right. He's a gigantor. <laughs> he looks like he oh bench God. presses cattle. Like he's, oh <laughs> he's gigantic. Right. He's just like, what's up? You know, and so I oh, saw wow. him. I saw him said, yo, man, what are the chances of me meeting this dude ever again in life? And I said, I'm going to go over to him. He, he said, uh, and the one guy said, I wonder why he doesn't have security. I go, who the fuck's going to run up on this guy? Look at him. Right. Who's going to uh, who's gonna run up on this guy without them absolutely getting their head knocked off? So I walk right up to him. I said, what's up, bro? And he said, hey, what's going on? Shook my hand like a little hard. I was like, ow. <laughs> Pop it, Dwayne. Oh, Dwayne. And he grabbed, and he's like, what's up? Start talking about movies he's doing. Yeah, yeah, man. Real cool. I said, yeah, man, I'm on tour doing some comedy shows. Got a couple theater dates. And he's like, yeah, man, keep doing it. Shook my hand, talked real cool. And his nice. thing was next to my thing. Next to, you know, the doors were next to each other. He was in like 73, I was 74. And I heard the announcement. I said, well, I got to bounce. Man, it's cool as shit meeting you. And he said, yeah, it's cool meeting you too. Shook my hand, and gave me the man hug, you know. Uh, and I was like, oh, fuck your <laughs> Gee, what are you, what are you, what are you eating? Other dudes? Oh, he's just so gigantic. And he was super chill. And then as soon as he got on a plane, I said, why don't you take a picture with him? I said, I don't, I didn't think about it. I didn't, I just, then I thought, you know what? I'll run into him again. And yeah, I didn't, I haven't yet, but you I will. will. You will, you will. There's, it's never too late. And I'm going to tell, dude, I met you at, I met you at the fucking airport, man. Yeah, now we're taking a picture. And now we're taking a picture now. And you want to arm wrestle? You want to arm wrestle? I'm serious. I'm not. When I I wish it sound like it's some bullshit. No, no. His arm. People don't believe me when I tell them. His arm is your leg. Oh, Lord. That's how. He's a gigantic. Like a giant. No, I totally believe you because I understand. I'm 6'2 and he's 6'5. Yeah. And I I I had to do this. What's going on, bro? Like yeah. that. Um, not a small man. Um, real chill. And the comics that I, I met are been chill, headliners. And I'm always nice to opener because I was like, dude, I was an opener. Like, why right. would you why would you be mean to the I see comics that are mean to the opener and say, Hey man, don't do this joke. Man, what if that's their only joke? Shut your mouth hole. Exactly. Well, you're a nice guy. You look and Joe says, I appreciate that, that you're a nice person. You definitely seem like a people's comic. I definitely come see your show and bring my friends. Well, I, I hope that I don't disappoint you. That'd be just <laughs> like, yeah, man, I watched him on the show, but boy, he sucked in real in real life. He he sucked. He should just he should just be a male prostitute for, for like <laughs> blind people. Jeez. Yeah, you should have an OnlyFans account. <laughs> I, you know what? I got cocoa butter. I might. Not that. I might, but no. I mean, I I love um, the fact that people have come out to shows. Like I thought about it. This one lady, I did a show. Uh, I forget what show it was, and and the lady said I drove like an hour and a half. I went, Aww. what? Aww, I was like, crazy. that's crazy. And I said, yo, that's so cool. She was so chill. And then her her friends like she really did. She really drove. I'm like. Aww. Um, I did a show called the Hollywood Comedy, a little tiny place, and she bought tickets and whole nine. And then she hit me up on the IG and was like, Thank you for you know taking the time after show. And I, I just thought, um, if I never make it big, big, 
because I'm doing okay. Can't act like I'm not. That would be bullshit. You but, do. Uh, doing, I'm doing okay. But I, I mean, but then when you're around Kevin Hart, you go, I'm not really there. I mean, he's so wow. And yeah. uh, I remember the guy that did the guest set at the Irvine was Daniel Tosh. Okay. And, and he bumped the other comic because he he killed, and the other comic okay. couldn't follow him. And that's the and and my, you saw my set. I'm so I'm a more of an aggressive comic, so mm -hmm. I don't care as much who's up before me because I'm going to say the shit I'm going to say anyway. Yeah, you're bold. You don't give a fuck, and that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, yeah. but the other comic is a very low key comic, and he didn't have oh, a good. So yeah. But all you all you people that are in the feed, the, the, my main thing is, um, you know, with comedy, I want people to at least leave and have a good that they say. You know what? Even if some of the stuff I say is a little too edgy because I'm going to admit it. I say some edgy shit. Well, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make people think and make them laugh at the same time. Oh, OK. Well, then, you know what? <laughs> right. All you people listen to Grace. <laughs> I, I, you know well, what? Grace you is have questions, actually, about about your special because you said something. I'm like, hmm, I'm going to ask him that. What? Okay. What is it? What is it, woman? This, this intrigued me and I thought it was so cool. You like. I am a chauvinist and a feminist at the same time. Right. You said that. Yes. So tell me how, do, why are you a chauvinist and why are you a feminist? What are you a chauvinist? What areas are you a chauvinist in and what areas are you a feminist in? Good question. Wow. I'm full of them. <laughs> oh. um, I'm a chauvinist because there's a certain point where I feel like the man should lead, period. Nice. I feel like I should take care of shit and you should understand that that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. and not minimize that part of me. And so that's you know, some women think, well, why can't a woman lead? I'm saying I'm not saying a woman can't lead. I'm saying if you're with me, I lead. Right. And I make sure shit is taken care of. But I'm a feminist because I do believe women deserve every possible equal right that you can possibly imagine. But I think there's uh, right now, I think the scales have tipped with women where they forget. Mm -hmm. Don't don't take away from the man's manhood. Yes. To get your equality. Don't demean him to get your equality. Yes. But you do deserve your equality. Well, and so. actually, it's unattractive to me as a, as a woman. I'm like uh, probably 90% straight, 10% a little gay, I guess. I there you go. Hey. Not, not like, uh, uh, <laughs> but. Oh, the people that feel like, wow. <laughs> yeah, like, wow. She said, but the 10% is in my head. It's not like I actually, you know. But as a woman, I as a straight woman, I think that I want the man to have that male energy, that's masculine energy. And yes, to, to lead in certain areas or, or to lead or to help me make a decision. And, and I will listen. I want that masculine energy in my life. Mm -hmm. I do, you know, I'm by myself. I'm single now. So I do have the masculine energy in me. So I do make the decisions. I can right. do all that. But if I'm with a man, I want that part of the man in my life. Why would I have a man if I already have everything and you know, like I have the masculine and the feminine. Why would I want a man if I don't allow him to be right masculine? Right. Does that makes sense. Completely. Yeah. So, and I think that actually uh, being vulnerable like that is um, takes more balls than saying I'm going to do what I want. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right. it's, it's um, if you trust the man, of course. <laughs> There's some yeah, idiot. No, no, yeah, yeah. And if he's not a <laughs> psycho. <laughs> And you yeah. wake up, you wake up in your bathroom with your kidney missing in a tub. Yeah. Well, let's like, go kill yeah. some people. Let's. I made yeah. the decision. No. Yeah. Exactly. No. I, I, no, I just feel like uh, that's why I believe that there's yeah. a point where women have to understand that. Or right, I'm gonna say speak for myself individually because I don't know about yeah. how other men roll. But it's like no, um, like, I, like one woman I took out and I went to open the door for. Her. She said, "You don't need to open the door for me." I'm like, "Wow." Okay. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Well, it was a problem with her, and that was the only date I was on with her. Yeah, no, um, that's, that's silly. And, and I love that. Like being being a gentleman, that is it's so a, cool. It's, it's, it should be a given. So I did that, yeah. and then and the other woman was like, uh, "Why did why wouldn't you um, let me just handle it myself?" I'm like, "Cause I'm supposed to." You're like you know. And I could tell we weren't going to get along, so that didn't work. <laughs> no, it didn't work because it's like, yo, you, you don't don't butt heads with me on everything. Yeah, yeah you know? no. That, why would you be with someone that you're going to butt heads with? 
It's so a you, Yeah, you have a problem with me opening the door for you. Like, well, I'm, a, I'm, I'm first off, I'm an independent woman. I can do open the door myself. I don't need a man to open my door. I'm like, wow, wow. <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, yeah. Enjoy your time with your vibrator. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, because it's not gonna happen. But you know, even if I was like super rich, uh, I always want the man to pay for things. Like on a date, I'll pay for things too. But like you want, I personally, you know, want the man to take charge. And that's one of the things, you know, that the man takes charge. If the guy has me pay for half, I'm like, bye, bitch. I'm never. See, to me, I, it's, you know what women said that when a man does that, that's toxic man masculinity. I'm like, shut your mouth. It's not. And see, but when you say shut your mouth, they go, see, like, listen, everybody's not going to be. You want the little frou frou man, then go get a little frou frou man. If you want that, are you are are you feel like he's being too dominant? Then maybe right, she'll... right, right. Yeah. So it's all about compatibility. You know, right. what do you want? What does the other person want? Do you match or not? And if yeah. you don't match, it's like next. Yeah, and comedy wise, I feel like um, there's there's comics that want to be alphas, and there's one comics that want to be apexes. I want to be an apex. I want to be. Mm -hmm. I want to come out. And I want you to leave and go, damn, I was at a show. I don't want them to be like, oh, that was cool. Yeah. I, I, I'll feel disappointed if I care. Eh, you're done. You're okay. <laughs> you're okay. Yeah. No, you want them to be like, wow, that was a fun time. So I, I comedy wise, that's why when we were doing the special, I told people, I told them because we were going over my material. I was yeah. like, no, I'm doing that bit. And he said, eh, that's a little. And uh, I was like, well, uh, make a decision because I'm doing it anyway. So as soon as right. I get out there, what are you going to do? Cut the sh cameras off? Yeah. Exactly. And then he, and he said, uh, this better work. I said, it'll be fine. <laughs> and the joke worked. The joke worked. And so I, and I told him it will work. And, um, and the, also I told him when we were blocking the, the, the special, uh, I wanted to do the werewolf bit. And I, and I wanted to make sure that the camera swooped in and out and we had a debate about that it's like you know why don't we just keep it on you i like no something about the camera coming in and boom mm -hmm. so it was like that part but when you're when you're trying to do all of that and then you're worried about the budget and then you know you got to edit it and you got to get asses and seats on the special that's a lot it was yeah but no i was you know, the only thing that was you know, it was getting on my nerves was, was my ex. <laughs> so you're so, you're so busy. You're not spending time with me. Uh, can, I'm shooting it tonight. Uh, so, are you serious? I said, can we hang out tomorrow? Well, I mean, I feel like you're paying attention to everybody but me. Wow. Wow. Okay. She's not get. She doesn't get it. No. Yeah. I think, but no, I've had that problem with some people or really, or, or relationships where, um, you know, I told like you met me in a comedy club. Yeah. What did you think I did? I mean, right. what do you think I did for a living? I right. You met me telling jokes. Mm -hmm. Then I told, well, babe, I gotta go do uh, Cincinnati for two nights. Um. So you're gonna be gone all weekend? Yes, I'll be gone all weekend. What? What? What are you talking about? What? <laughs> what? Well, maybe does she have a an inner life or a life? Oh. I don't know anymore. Uh, that was four years ago. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, if you have a life, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, if I'm dating somebody and they're like, I'm going for a month, I'm like, cool, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to do this and that. I'll focus on this and that. Yeah, I mean, go do your shit. Go do your yeah. shit. But like comedy-wise, I feel like um, I've seen so many comics step off their material-wise, not say really? stuff. And my thing is not that I want to be, you know, the the uh, where they say snowflakes. I, I see some comics that are snowflakes, and my attitude is like, I, literally, there's no force field holding you from not seeing my show. If you don't like what I'm saying, you literally can leave. Right. Exactly. So there's no like so, and it's not like I'm saying, like I can see if I was up there. Like I did a joke about January 6th because I thought the insurrection at was some crazy craziest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, when you're stabbing a cop with a Trump flag and then you turn around and act like it was just, we were just, um, rioting. No, you were assaulting right. the police officer. So yeah. I did, a, I did a joke about that. 
And a guy literally wanted to debate with me about it. Like, well, you know, they were just making sure that the world knew that, that Trump won. I went, no, he, he didn't win. Just accept the L and that's it. Okay. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Accept it. Yeah. Yeah. But don't go stab people with a flag. <sighs> and he argued with me. And then one guy threatened me at a club called Flappers. You know Flappers? Oh, yeah, of course I know Flappers. Uh, yeah. Right. And he didn't realize that I'll punch you in their fucking face. And wow. I mean, forget the jokes part. And he stood up. We're going to make America great again. And you're not going to be invited. And, it, and I was <laughs> like, sorry, that's funny. Because I did a joke about how orange Trump is. Because to me, Trump looked orange. And the people were like, yeah. how? How could he be racist? He's like, is he racist? Is <laughs> like, what you, he's gonna have to be racist against other colors, like because he's to me now. If, if I don't care yeah. if somebody in the feet, to me half the time he looked orange. No, well, he is orange, almost like a oompa loompa, like a like a little bit of like an oompa loompa. So yeah. I do joke about him, and he obviously was a Trump supporter. Stood up, started yelling at me. Now you know how flappers is built. If it's, it's a he was in the front, so people got yeah. freaked out, and then I said. Hey, why don't you talk to me behind the club after I'm done one on one? How about we do that? Okay. Whatever, bro. And then I knew he wasn't of about course, that. Chicken out. He wasn't about that life. He really didn't want none of that smoke. And yeah. then um he told his friends, hey, let's get up and leave. It was the best shit ever. They're like, we paid for our tickets. We're staying. And he left by himself. Like, of course, he bitched the whole time out. You I want my money back. And uh, and it was funny, the manager's like, Fine, as long as you leave. <laughs> but yeah, he was like, "We're gonna make America great again, and you're not gonna be invited." I'm like, "Wow, bruh." But I, no, my immediate thought was like, "If you're really that much of a tough guy, wait till I'm done. Meet right. me in the parking lot, and let's see, let's let's throw hands and see what happens." But I mean, it's rare. I rarely get heckled. I mean, even when I say some incendiary shit at the. the People come to my show. I made sure some people, some clubs put the little warning. <laughs> they put a warning? What's the warning? Um, you, if, if you're easily offended by this material, this is not the show for you. Yeah, good. That way you don't waste your money. Good. Yeah. You're very yes. bold and I, I really appreciate and admire that. That's great. You're like, you don't give a fuck. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and when I was doing a special, that's how I felt. You know, I, when I was doing a special, you yeah, my son, the, the phone. Oh, <laughs> no, it's the evil phone. <laughs> Keep it away. Uh, keep the phone away. It's a yes, please. Phone is, that phone is possessed by Satan. Yeah, like it is. What is that? That's Satan. That's a, yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Well, yes. Remember that? Oh, I would love, uh, I loved him. And that, so like, funny. I like, he's one of my, he's one of my favorite, uh, just energy wise. I got Dana Carvey, but, um, I like the bold comics. I liked, mm -hmm. I like Joe Rogan too when he does stand up. But I mean, he yeah. does, he's more of a, a podcaster now, I guess, than UFC guy. Mm -hmm. But I like Rogan as a stand up. I like yeah. Joe Rogan as a stand up. I who, like, else, who else are your favorite comics? Uh, there was a comic named Bill Hicks. Yes. Yes, uh, who passed away. Yeah. Um, Paul Mooney, who is one of my. Uh, one of the reasons I do comedies, uh, is, uh, Mr. Paul Mooney. Uh, I'm Mr. Paul Mooney. Uh, listen, <laughs> uh, that's how he used to. Uh, these motherfuckers aren't ready for the shit I'm about to say. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm Mr. Paul Mooney. God damn it. And so I, I Paul Mooney, and then I would say, um, come back, comic from back in the day, um, Dick Gregory, Sam Kennison. Oh, there. Joe asked if you liked uh, Sam Kennison, so. But Sam Kennison, I used to love the fact he was full on in your face. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. liked Bill Hicks because Bill Hicks was brilliant. Chris Rock, uh, his bigger and blacker was uh, he just destroyed that. Yeah. Um, I like some of Chappelle's thought process. Yeah. Um, but uh, like uh, Wanda Sykes. I, I like love her. Wanda Sykes. I like Wanda Sykes. And there's I like uh, the same comics. I like Wanda, Dave Chappelle. I like, Chappelle. I like Chappelle. Mm -hmm. But um, and then uh, oh, you know what? I like Whitney Cummings. Yes, Whitney's good. Very good. Whitney's good. Uh, Whitney's yeah. good. Um, you know who I worked with? I was surprised she did really good. A lot. I didn't like her stuff before, but I like her now. Eliza Schlesinger. She is hilarious. She before she just seemed like she wasn't hitting them, and she she had a really good set. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, this, to some of the female comics, I like bold female comics uh, that don't fit into what men think female comics. Females, are. Yeah. I, I just, I just feel like I, I'm so sick of women trying to fit in the fucking mold. Like, oh. like how? Like, um, where, like a friend of mine, I'll give you an example. A friend of mine is a comic and she says, well, I don't want the guys to think I'm a little too much. I'm like, if the guy thinks you're a little too much, maybe that guy can't handle you. Absolutely. Who wants somebody who can't handle you? What, what's the point? Yeah. So, I, but I, that's crazy. He says Sam Kennison. Yeah. And, and I like, I like I, Sam Kennison got one of the best bit about Jesus coming back. Um, and uh, just, uh, and Bill Hicks's bit is even better. I think when he said, you think the first thing Jesus wants to see is a cross when he comes back to earth. All you Christians wearing crosses, why don't you wear a bullet pendant while you're talking to the Kennedys? It's like, <laughs> wow. And then he said, and all you people that kill yourself from jumping off a roof because you thought you can fly, maybe you deserve to die. If you thought you could fly, why didn't you take off from the ground? Why didn't you test it from the ground? I can't. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, I hope that they knew they couldn't fly. Yeah. If you thought you could fly, <laughs> test it from the ground. Um, I just thought. Genius. Was, that was genius. Brilliant. Yes. And, uh, I got to, I was managed by Bill Hicks manager, Jack Mondros, uh, for a little bit. And um, Hicks, I got to open for Hicks. And Hicks, I was about to get kicked out of the comic strip because I did a Satan worship joke and some people got offended. Oh. And um, because I, I just thought you really had to run out of religions if you decide, yeah, I think I'm going to go with this Satan thing. So I was doing a bit about Satan and worshiping Satan and not me, but people who worship Satan. I'm going, yeah. wow, you really have to be committed to, you know, it's like you, to, to sacrifice babies and shit. So I did the bit. Some people were offended and the club owner was going to kick me out. He said, Shang, I told you not to. I'm doing the guy. That, his name was Lucian Hold. He's like, Shang, I told you not to uh, do that bit. You did it again. And I told you not to. So I don't think you could be working here. And I didn't know Bill Hicks. I didn't know him from a can of paint. I knew who he was as a star with the comics. He walks up and says, fuck that. I love that joke he does about Satan. If he doesn't work here, I don't work here. And he was a big wow. name. So nice. I was like, and I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> what he said. <laughs> I know him, and then and then That's awesome. like, well, Shang, just watch your back because he had a ponytail. He used to rub his ponytail. Well, Shang, just make sure you watch your back and um, uh, try to curve it. If we get some more, you know, try to curve it, and if we get me more complaints, I just think maybe you should write some other kind of material other than sacrificing babies. And oh, I went, and I went, uh, I'll, okay, yeah. I'll remember that. Yeah. And then like I got booked a month later and I did it right. again. So what do you think of cancel culture now? Bunch of fucking losers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what you know, I thought. Get mad, like, hey, you don't you can't, I dare you. Um, no, I, I mean I get it. People feel like they're emotional and you know, a lot of people are really yogurty. We got a lot of yogurty people that are yogurty fruit at the bottom, just yo play consistency people. <laughs> and just like softy, soft, softies. And um, yeah, I've had that happen. But they, like, uh, my thing is, did you laugh? They go, yeah, but that was wrong what you said. Exactly. <laughs> That's why you laughed. Shut That's your wrong. mouth. <laughs> yeah, the cancel culture, a lot of comics are getting hit with that. Yeah. I, I, I get hit with it, but maybe I'm not a big enough name yet. But when they hit me, I go, listen, don't come to my shows. How about that? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's the, right. and that's the answer. Yeah. I don't like this kind of music. Then don't listen to it. Exactly. It's a form of uh, dictatorship in a way. I agree. Wow. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Great it's way to put it. my way or the highway. It's like, uh, no. And I, like you said, you don't like my comedy because it's edgy? Then bye, bitch. Don't yeah. come to the shows. That's it. And there's you can always go see uh, just so many other comics that might fit into your format. Exactly. And so, I mean, but some people are like, well, you have to fit into what the industry wants. And I'm like, mm, I think I will have the industry come to me. And so far, um, I have more play with the general public than I do industry. Mm -hmm. Getting to the point where the industry kind of kind of pay attention. So yeah. I'm in that weird teetering part 
And I've, I've had as an actor, uh, I've gotten booked on stuff. I've done a lot of stuff, but what have you done as an actor, lad? Um, that I've, you're proud of. Uh, guest starring on NCIS uh, on both all the different versions of it. I've been on those all, three of those. Uh, had a reoccurring on a show called Heroes. Mm -hmm. um, CSI. I guest starred on CSI, and that was cool. Um, and 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 um, a couple of independent movies where I was dramatic movies. Um, where I played a straight man and I wanted to show him I could pull off drama. So um, I'm proud of those. Um, Zach and Cody, which oh, nice. where I was the security guard that I was the security guard that didn't mess around. <laughs> that was the voice I used. Listen, <laughs> listen, you guys. So, um, but no, but you know what? That doesn't translate with comedy. Like if somebody comes to see you at a comedy club, the only person I've seen movie wise that I've seen really a translate heavy is Tiffany Haddish. Because yeah. Tiffany Haddish, her movie stuff made her comedy as a stand up a star. Yes. Whereas then if you look at Adam uh, what uh Sandler? Adam Sandler, Adam Sandler's stand up, his movies made his stand up as a stand up a star. Whereas when you look at Chris Rock, his stand up is mm -hmm. what made him get into movies. Right. Right. If you look at, he became such a big standup. They put him in movies. Um, I feel like they did that with a couple of comics uh, that you know became so big as comics. Like Andrew Dice Clay was such a big comic. Like we got to make movies around him. Right. You know, but he, you know, he did some things that people didn't like, and then, uh, but it wasn't his on stage. People that love him on stage. It was yeah. the hickory duckery doc. That chick was sucking my cock. People, <laughs> but they liked it. Dice Clay was a, Dice Clay was a huge star for a while there, and yeah. I think he's still a, a big star. I mean, he, he he's I, a I, great actor, by the way. He he pulls off drama very well. Oh, excellent! Yes, I was surprised when I saw him. I'm like, damn. He did a I forget the movie he did with Louis C.K. where he was. It was really yeah, like, what was it? I I can't remember. I can see it in my head, but I can't remember the. I movie. can see it in my head. I can't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't remember, but. Like uh, that's I wanted to show him I can be a dramatic actor and I can pull it off and I can do it. So that 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 was um, that was yeah, but it didn't translate to my standup. Like cause people people see me go, Thanks. yes, I saw you in that movie, but I mean you weren't really funny. It wasn't. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not related to. It's like they're up here like this. They're not me. Like, Jamie they Fox is funny as a comic and as a personality. But most of his movies he's been doing that are big are dramas. That is Thank true. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's a comic flat out. I mean, I know him as a comic and I've met him as a comedian. But if you look at the movies he won for, Collateral, drama. Uh, with the one where he was Ray, drama. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, something Citizen where he's a lawyer in it and, and, and Gerard Butler is killing a bunch of people, drama. Um, so uh, I, Steve Martin. Great dramatic actor. He's excellent, amazing. Yeah, right. so I just, I, I wanted to show people that, and the only way I could do it, because I couldn't get into big movies, I did a bunch of independents. And the independents let you get the freedom to just yeah you know, flex and show that you could pull it off. But I really want to do comedies. I, I mean, I've done comedies on television, because I used to do the Jamie Foxx show, and I did Robert Townsend show, and you know, I, as you know, sitcom stuff, and that was cool. and. The you know, money was cool, and it, it helped me pay off a lot of debt, and I had a lot of debt. And I still got debt, but not like I had. I hear so you. When I first started, I was scraping. And yeah. it was funny. I got, uh, I got on uh, the Late Show. I think it was the Late Show, my first Late Show. And a lady from at and like, literally called me and said, hey, we saw it. Congratulations. So you now you can pay that $700 you owe. Oh, Dead yeah. serious. Oh, wow. Like, and I was like, oh, I, I guess I can now. Yeah, because I didn't pay it because I didn't have it. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then it was funny. I got another TV show and I was back on rent. I didn't have rent. I was like, oh, I didn't man. have kids. Then it was just me, comic, trying to get on. And I didn't have rent money. Mm -hmm. And um, I literally got the money, 
and had to sign a check over to my land. People, I was like, "Woo, man, you did a TV show!" Ah, woo! And people were like, "Oh, man, you got money now!" As soon as I got the check, I was like, "Well, here you go, Mr. Clanigan. Thank you for letting me be so late on my rent." Oh my God! What is NBC on here for? I said, "Well, it's your check now." I was so broke, and when I got the show, I was like, "Ooh, this was a that was a close one," and I took the check. And, I, and, and then um, I did this other thing, Famecast. My brother got in trouble. And I, I won Famecast. It was $10,000. And I had to give it to the lawyer to get my brother out of trouble. So every time I would get these, I'm like, wow, you just made a lot of money. I'm like, mm. I had to use the money to <laughs> pay off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, essentials. And, then, and people were like, well, at least you can do that. Yeah, but if I wouldn't have won uh, uh, that ten grand, I, my brother would have been like, yes. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple years. <laughs> I love you, bro. Bye. But uh, no, yeah. So comedy has paid off a lot of things. And um, I'm still, you know, I'm not there yet. I'm still trying to get there. But so far, um, it's been pretty good. And the pandemic threw me for a loop. Of course. I lost 39 <laughs> dates. I had 39 dates booked. Uh, and, and I mean, every single one of them fell out. And if I didn't have my album money, um, wow. I, I have uh, comedy albums. I get residuals from my comedy albums. If I didn't have that, I was like, "Woo!" Yeah, it has been rough. It yeah. had been, it'd been a, I'd have been, it'd been like, "Hey, everybody, uh, make sure you check out my fans only." Um, <laughs> only be, fans, only fans, only fans. I'm sorry, only fans. I'll be doing sit-ups, butt naked with a heart on. Please, <laughs> please, please watch and donate. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, so luckily, sound. Shout out to Sound Exchange. Because without you, I don't know what I'd have did. That's too oh, funny. So close. So and you know we've been talking for like an hour and fifteen minutes. It's it's like so oh, easy to talk was, to you. It's crazy. I usually keep it. I didn't even say yeah. I was. Uh, I was but going. you can come back. I would love to have you back, and we can. Okay. Share no, I, I didn't even realize the time. I didn't even look. Me at the time. neither. But I'm like, I looked. I'm like, damn. Oh. So, okay. So this is why I ask all my guests like the last question. Okay. What, what would you like to be known for? This, that's a good one. But comedy wise or just as a man? In general, as a human. Just being a cool motherfucker. <laughs> I love that. I, 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 um, I, I just, just, that would be for people like, even when I'm old and they put on my tombstone, I really want to, I'm going to tell my son. I love uh, it. I'll, I want on my urn or whatever. Man, he was a cool motherfucker. That's, that's awesome. And yeah. you are. That's what I want. Yeah. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you. No, you are. 100%. I appreciate it. Yes, I mean it. I'm not a good liar. It would show on my face. Yeah, there you, you go. Are. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You really are. You really are. Very cool. <laughs> You're like, oh, Very. I don't think that was too sincere. I don't know if I trust that. <laughs> but no, um, no, I appreciate the time. I wanted to get down with this and i um, glad we scheduled it. Um, I've been literally, I did shows last night. I did shows the night before. I was in Phoenix. I was in Wow. San Francisco was in the Bay, and then I'm off. To, I'm off tonight. I'm gonna eat yeah, some. Panda. So I bought some Panda Express, and I'm gonna watch Godzilla versus King Kong with Cameron. That sounds like a plan. Sounds yes. like a great night. Yes. And by the way, don't yes. tell me who wins. No I'm kidding. I already saw it once. We're gonna watch it again. <laughs> no, because no, you know that movie killed it at the box. I'm like, I just thought Godzilla isn't that old school shit. But yeah, people loved it, and I'm like. You never know. He's a classic, you know? That's yeah, it. you're right. You're right. King Kong, Godzilla. And people were like, well, what was the story? Who, who cares? Who it's, cares? We saw Godzilla. We saw Godzilla. We yeah. saw a big monkey and a big lizard fighting each other, breaking shit up. Good movie. Sometimes exactly. you gotta cut, yeah, sometimes you got to cut your brain off and stop looking for those ethereal levels to everything. Sometimes... Right. Sometimes yeah. it's just, just simple shit. Yeah, just enjoy it. That's like yeah. analyzing. I wonder why the strawberry tastes good. Because it does. Eat it. Shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I'm so sick of people like, I don't understand the meat. It's, sometimes you just, roller coasters are scary, but you like them because the adrenaline rush. Then yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. That's how yeah. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know. exactly. Wow. That is exactly how I feel. Just enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Exactly. Your feed, uh, Joe is Joe is on it. Thank you, Joe. Joe is on it. Yes. Joe, thank yes. you for being uh, and and see and now you're in the category of a cool motherfucker. <laughs> you know Joe what? Is definitely a cool definitely motherfucker. Joe. You know what? I saw uh, what was the movie? Uh, Pulp Fiction. 
And Samuel Jackson had the wallet that said bad motherfucker. And I thought, <laughs> I got to get one of those. That's great. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, cause that, that's one of my favorite movies of all time, by the way. Oh. If anybody in the feed has not seen this movie, you need to smack yourself in the face. Uh, <laughs> Pulp Fiction is so goddamn good. Yes. I mean, it's so good. Uh, uh, I, I got to give it Sam Jackson, but Travolta kills it. Um, it's just every every scene. I love it. That's one of my favorite. Badass motherfucker, there, Joe. No, yeah, it was that. Was it bad? No, I thought it was badass it, motherfucker. It was, he had it on his wallet. And I thought, <laughs> where do you find that? Like, I got to go online and find one of those. Yeah, I would love that to be my wallet. Like, I just I love shit like that. I, you know, I, I know that's people are like you're so goofy. I'm like, if you didn't see the movie, you won't get it. Yeah, right, right. No, that's a great. I support you. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. All right. Thank you so much, Shan. Thank you, you are so kind to give us the time to entertain us and be so raw and real. I love that. Thank and, you. And um, so hopefully <laughs> we'll get to do this again in a, in a few months. And I appreciate it. Yeah, no. Yeah. And I'd love to have you again. Thank you guys for being so icy chill. And hopefully you get a chance to check out special. Uh, yeah. Cause I got to pay these investors. That's and, right. <laughs> I don't watch it just cause of that. I got to pay the investor. But if you do watch it, make sure you rate it and review it. That is how they check the algorithm on this special. So if you do watch the special, whether you enjoyed it or not, please review it because the reviews do matter. Um, because that's how you stay high in the, um, it's mm -hmm. called queue. And if you stay high in the queue, become those. And if, if you get a chance, follow me on, um, I was going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. IG. Which is comedian Shang? I made it simple. I, didn't I want think. To... I think. Did you spell? Did you spell comedian and Shang? Oh, I might have typed it too fast. Yeah, it's comedian Shang. Okay, here I'll edit it for you. So everybody, if you guys want to follow Shang, this is his handle. Is it on IG and Twitter? Uh, no, my Twitter got um, taken down. What did you say? Uh, I don't know what which one it was. I just said that I think that the. People that stabbed the cops on the January 6th, oh, that. all of them need to be hit in the head with a dead fish. <laughs> and they, they banned her account for that? That's, that's considered saying violence. Violence. With a fish? Well, I just thought it, a dead fish would be funny. Just because yeah. not only are you getting hit in the head really hard, you smell bad you for smell a long bad. time. Yeah, that's not. Oh, whatever. But it is considered violence. So okay, I understand. I lost a hundred thousand followers. Shut up! Oh my god! And then I, I've been trying to appeal it. I said, obviously, you're not killing people with a dead fish, but you're threatening violence. And I was oh. like, I am. Oh well, technically, yeah, you're right. But come on, that was kind of a goofy joke. I found a picture with somebody getting smacked in the head with a giant carp. And I mean, they were lighting this dude up with it. And I thought it was funny that somebody would take the time to beat somebody with a fish. It's weird. And uh, I thought it was more of a joke, but apparently some people took it very, very seriously. Yeah, apparently. Oh. Yeah. So, but no, I will get another Twitter. Yeah. I'll, I'll put up another Twitter, but my uh, IG is Comedian Shang and my website is IamShang.com. So you can sign up there. I'll let you know when I got shows coming up. I'm setting up a bunch of local shows, but most of my shows until September or on the weekend, I'm usually on the road. I'm going to Cleveland. Uh, I'm going to Jackson, Mississippi next weekend, then Cleveland, then Vegas, then uh, Kansas City, and then I'm in Maryland, and then I'm in Vegas again, and then I'm in wow. Detroit, Detroit, Houston, and then uh, Cincinnati, and I forget where I'm after that. So. Well, where can they see where you're going to be on your website, right? On the okay. website, yeah. I'm going to be after I after I watch the movie. I'm going to um, update it tonight. Uh, so I'm going to watch the movie and I'm going to eat some rice and then I'm going to update my calendar. But it has most of the dates on there now. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you guys thank for you. tuning in and commenting. Everything was so fun, and uh, I'll see you guys next weekend. 
Yes, first make sure everybody watches. Laugh at first. <laughs> love at first. <laughs> I just, I'm supposed to say love at first. Laugh, love, love at first. Laugh. I sang it. I love that ending. There you go. Right. With that. <laughs>